Hello, my name is Marissa Gillette and I am the chair of the Connecticut Public Utilities Regulatory Authority, also known as PIRA. On August 4th, 2020, Tropical Storm Isaias swept across the state of Connecticut, knocking out power to hundreds of thousands of Connecticut residents and businesses during the heart of the COVID-19 pandemic. In response, Governor Ned Lamont requested that PIRA investigate both electric distribution companies Eversource and UI's response to and preparation for the tropical storm. In response to Governor Ned Lamont's request, Connecticut PIRA initiated the docket and began investigating the preparation for and response to the tropical storm by both electric utilities. What followed was a months long investigation that was assisted both by comments provided by members of the public as well as by the interveners into the proceeding. We were fortunate to have the participation of many towns and cities across the state of Connecticut, represented both by individual towns as well as the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. In addition, we had stakeholders such as the Office of Consumer Council, the Attorney General, and the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, all poised to assist us with the investigation. We held several public comment hearings where we received verbal testimony from both elected officials and residents as well as hundreds and hundreds of written comments providing testimony from the perspective of individual customers across Connecticut that were affected by the tropical storm. Connecticut PIRA, as well as other stakeholders, issued hundreds and hundreds of interrogatories trying to get to the bottom of what happened in the days in the leading up to the tropical storm, as well as the days that followed. We held weeks of evidentiary hearings, both in December and early January, followed by additional opportunities for both utilities to present comments on our draft decision, oral arguments. And finally, today, Wednesday, April 28th, the three commissioners, myself, joined by Vice Chairman Jack Pekoski and Commissioner Michael Karen, have adopted the decision in full. So where do we go from here? First, we have to conclude the subsequent phase of this proceeding in which the authority decides whether or not it's appropriate to level civil penalties against one or both of the electric utilities. Having found numerous deficiencies and other actions that were both unreasonable and imprudent taken by the management of both utilities, the authority has what it believes is a probable basis to level civil penalties under the law. In the notice of violation, the authority will detail the probable violations that the utilities have made with respect to established performance standards and any other violations of statute, commission order, or regulation that the authority has reason to believe the utilities, one or both, have violated, as well as the accompanying civil penalties and dollar amounts. So the subsequent phase of this proceeding will look at the applicability of civil penalties Today's decision takes several quantifiable steps. First, it applies a 90 basis point reduction to the return on equity of Eversource. It also applies a 15 basis point ROE reduction to that of UI. These basis point reductions reflect what the authority believes is a needed financial incentive so that the management of both of these utilities strive to enhance and improve their performance in future storms. Until such time that the performance of both utilities is enhanced and demonstrably better, the basis point reduction to their return on equity will continue. In addition, the authority orders several actionable items to be undertaken by both utilities in the next several months. First, the authority, in recognition of the deficiencies in communication that were experienced by both utilities with respect to communicating with both customers as well as elected officials, in particular the elected officials and municipalities who need to be able to receive consistent and actionable information by the utilities so that life-threatening blocked roads and other items and priorities throughout the towns can be addressed in a coordinated and timely fashion. There are orders in today's decision that address this issue. Additionally, other orders in today's decision address the deficiencies that the authority found with respect to the communication by the utilities with medical hardship customers, those customers who rely on electric service for life-sustaining reasons. The order addresses 
communications by the utilities with both those customers and the municipalities before, during, and after the storm. Another directive in today's decision addresses the deficiency in personnel that was seen throughout the storm response efforts. The authority has previously recognized the importance of having adequate personnel on the ground pre-staged and physically located in Connecticut, especially in the first 48 hours following a tropical storm. There were deficiencies noted, especially with respect to Eversource in this matter, and today's decision takes specific actionable items to address these shortcomings in the next several months. The emergency response plans of both utilities must be updated pursuant to the directions in today's decision. Another order in today's decision has to do with management audits. Specifically, there were a number of deficiencies, a number of violations of acceptable performance standards, and a number of instances in which the management of both Eversource and UI exercised imprudent or unreasonable judgment. As a result, the authority is ordering both companies to undergo comprehensive management audits, which will be scoped in conjunction with stakeholders this summer. The authority expects the management audits to generate actionable items that build on the findings from today's decision. We look forward to sharing the results of those management audits with you, members of the public, elected officials, in the coming months and years ahead. For now, I know that there are two questions at the top of everyone's mind. Number one, does today's decision address cost recovery associated with the storm? And number two, does today's decision or the one that will come in the subsequent proceeding in which the authority may choose to level penalties, are those penalties recoverable from ratepayers? Let me take the second question first. No, the penalties that the authority may impose on one or both of the EDCs are not recoverable from ratepayers. They are recoverable from the shareholders of Eversource and UI. Number two, the, f the first question that was posed is, does today's decision address cost recovery associated with the tropical storm? No. While the authority cannot pre preclude Eversource or UI from eventually seeking cost recovery, it was not sought in this proceeding, nor does today's decision address it or allow it. What the authority has done is make some preliminary findings re regarding the prudency of the actions taken by the management of both Eversource and UI during the course of the storm. Because cost recovery for utilities is bound by several U.S. Supreme Court precedents regarding prudency of actions and reasonableness, today's decision has findings that will bear directly on any future cost recovery requests that may or may not be made by the utilities. Put simply, the costs of the storm are not yet ripe for the authority's review. They have not been sought, nor have they been granted. The work is not over when we finish the civil penalty phase. In fact, it has just begun. What the authority knows for sure is that the tropical storm that swept across Connecticut last August was not the first, nor will it be the last storm that the state of Connecticut faces. The authority has several ongoing proceedings right now housed under our equitable modern grid proceeding in which we are actively investigating ways to make the grid both more resilient and reliable. In addition, we will be looking for your feedback and continued comments in those proceedings as well as others as we look to transition into performance-based regulation as called for by the Take Back Our Grid Act. For more on today's decision, please visit our website where we have available the full text of today's decision, as well as the press release and accompanying frequently asked questions. Stay tuned for the next phase of this proceeding, and we look forward to hearing from you then. Thank you.